Not very tiny. All right, we are live. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is actually a rainy day, which we haven't had much of in a while. Um, so hopefully maybe there'll be a few of you watching because you're bored and at home scrolling, um, scrolling Facebook. I was going to say Twitter. It's not Twitter. It's Facebook. Um, so anyway, uh, and right on cue, the bird. Hi, Afra. Um, yeah, 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 okay, um, so yeah, so last week, Afra, we did the bottle painting, um, I'll show you the final, I forgot to grab them, but they are right here, the final three, so this was, my roommates painted along with me, because they both had the day off, so here is one of them. There is paper so wet from the humidity. There's another one. And there is mine. Yeah, mine. Thanks, Afro. Um, so yeah, so those are, that's what we did last week. This week, uh, we're doing Afro's, ex Afro. There's a comment that Afro's excited about the rain. Afro's excited about everything all the time, especially, especially when I talk to my computer. Um, she She's basically doing the bird equivalent of blowing raspberries at me. Anyway, this week we're doing two things that are crafty but also practical um, if you like birds and plants. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a homemade bird feeder. We're using slightly different tools than usual. Um, at least for some, some of it. Afra! Oh my god, bird, please. Settle. Settle yourself. She's been very quiet today, I think, listening to the rain, and so now she's like, now I do all the screen. Um, so basically what you need for this is you need a clean ball jar. This one's only relatively clean because I just finished what was in it yesterday. I, the littler ones are better. I thought this was, what I had in here was one of the little ones, and I was wrong, so I have a big one. But one of the little ones really is preferable for this because we're going to make a hummingbird feeder out of it. So you need that. You need a clean top. Um, and then a clean one of these. Again, my top is clean. This was an extra solo top from another project. Um, this is a little sticky. I had pictures in it. Um, Afra is always part of the conversation. That's just her, her jam. So yeah, you're going to put the top on just like you would a normal bar ball jar. Um, and what you're going to do is, you know, the idea is that this is going to be your bird feeder. And so you need a way for the hummingbirds to get into the top. Um, this is why the smaller one's better, because you don't have to put as much liquid in it. Um, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to take either a nail or a screw or whatever you have lying around. I have a slightly bigger screw and a tiny nail. Honestly, the screw's probably going to be better. A bigger nail would be better. I just don't happen to have any in my house. And a hammer. And you're just going to hammer little holes. Can you see that little hole? Into the top of, so that was the nail. Let's try one with the screw. The screw's a little better. It, it Because of the way screws are, you can see that. There's a lot of glare. Let's see if I can eliminate some of the glare. No, if I eliminate the glare, I eliminate the view. Um... You can see it's a little bit bigger. It's also going to indent a little more, but that's okay. You just got to make sure it's big enough that a hummingbird can get its small little beak in there. Um, so you're going to do a bunch of these all around. You know, be careful when you're hammering. Don't hammer your finger. I just hammered my finger a tiny bit. Because I was paying more attention to the screen than to my hammering. Now the fun thing about this is you can hammer a nice little pattern into here if you want to. I just did a simple around and then a center one. But you could like do a little flower, you know, whatever you want if you're if you're that kind of crafty. Um, 
I am not that kind of crafty, as you probably all know by now. So this is, I went with simple. Um, yeah, so that's the basics of it. Um, then obviously you want something to hang it with. A lot of these examples I saw were a little fancier where they'd like Gorilla glued or hot glued, like an actual metal chain that you can hang. But you can also use our good old friend, as you can often use, the pipe cleaner. Probably going to need two, but we're going to start with one. Now, you can do this a couple of ways. One is you can make your holes big enough, because you can see, you see here, my hole is big enough that it's in there. Um, if you do, let me take this apart. So you could do something where you use some of your holes and put it in this way. Put it back out the other side. Um, and then twist it. You got to twist real, real good, though, because this is glass. You really don't want it to fall. You know, and there's... And then when you put this back on... Maybe not put that. There we go. Now you have... And hold it. Obviously, if you do that, you're going to want to probably put a few more holes in here so that you don't lose some of your holes for this. Um, you could also do something where, let me take this back apart. Um, instead of that, where you kind of, yeah, Afra. Be careful too if you take this top back off Ow. because it's going to be very sharp. You can kind of see the little sharpness. You can see where it's taking some of the. And, I mean, it's you're, you're cutting metal. It's like the edge of a tin can. So, like, be careful. Try and do not bleed. If you're afraid you're going to leave this on, Afra, stop. Please. You could also do something where you, like, wrapped it around here on both sides. Um, and then it should usually, because of the way these tighten, it should still tighten down. Let's see if I can actually get it to work. And again, this is where using two together might be good. You can also glue pipe cleaners together, you know, like test, you know, tighten them up and then, uh, let's see if this actually works. Yeah, this is going to work. Well, sort of. Tighten it. Tighten it and then they've pushed together so you got to kind of. I mean, you can also do one that's a little tilty. That's okay. So something like that will work perfectly fine. Uh, if you've never made a hummingbird feeder before, uh, hummingbird food is really, really easy. You do not have to buy it. In fact, some of the sources I found suggest you don't buy it because a lot of the ones you buy have the red dye in them and the red dye is not preferable. Um, you can also, I mean, like, hummingbirds like... Afra! Like red and bright colors. Um, so you could certainly like take, I have Sharpies, here's Sharpie, you know, red Sharpie and you know, you can color on the sides, you can color on the top. I'm just going to do a little scribble, you know, so that you, you can, the glass will melt away, but you could paint on the glass. Um, there's a lot of ways to color the glass or part of the glass. Um, you know, tape, put tape on, like masking tape, and then color the masking tape. There's all sorts of ways you could do it to make it kind of match the um, the classic, like, ones you buy. But, yeah, hummingbird food is actually really easy. So let me unscrew this top yet again. Um, and actually undo, undo all of this because it's just making my life more difficult right now. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I will say I would not suggest that second one that I did. Uh, where you looped around the outside makes it a little more difficult to take things off. Um, so yeah, hummingbird feeder is really easy and follows two two simple ingredients. In this lovely Star Wars cup, I have just a bunch of regular tap water, and then I have over here my big old jug of everyday sugar. And basically, what you want is, and then I have somewhere on this table here it is. I have. A tablespoon. Basically what you want is you want one part sugar to four parts water. Let me just double check that I'm getting that. It's not four parts entirely. Hold on a sec. Let me just double check my... Yeah, okay, I was right on that. Um, yeah, so one part sugar to four parts water. So if I put... And you can make a lot because it will last in your fridge. So you can make... I'm just going to make a little bit because I don't 
actually have a place to hang this hummingbird feeder, so I'm not going to yet. So if I do a tablespoon of sugar, dump it in my little bin here, I will then do four tablespoons of this here water. One, two, three, four. And then, doesn't matter if it's hot or cold water, sugar will dissolve. De will um, um, will dissolve in all of them. And then you just give a good stir. Hot might be a little better; it'll dissolve a lot quicker. But if you can keep at it, you can hear that mine um, Yes, for the dinosaur sweet tooth in the little hummingbirds, we're gonna add sugar. So yeah, I mean hot is better. I didn't I just grabbed tap water, but and I didn't turn it particularly hot, but you're just gonna mix it up. Doesn't even smell particularly sweet. Um, but yeah, apparently dinosaurs were really into sugar and passed it on to at least one of their relatives, aka the hummingbird. Although a lot of them are, I think a bunch of birds actually would. Most of them just can't get to it because it's in this tiny little feeder with a tiny little hole. And then you just take that, that liquid that you mixed up, um, and I'll say, as you can see, my, I be able to see there, my sugar didn't super dissolve. Um... And yeah, and then you just pour enough in that um, into your, which obviously I didn't make nearly enough, but as I said, I don't have a place to hang this right now, so I don't really, this is just an example. Um, and you'd want to fill it up, you know, right, pretty much right to the top. Afra, my lord sakes, bird. Um, yeah. Um... That's why the little ones are better, so you don't have to put as much in. And you should replace this water every couple of days. Pour it out, give it a good rinse out, put new water in. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can... And so there you go, there's your hummingbird feeder. I'm not going to tilt it too much because there's now liquid in here. I can at least... There we go, you can see the top. And yeah, feel free to decorate it in any way, man, you know, paint, manner, shape, or form that you... But bright colors are good. Bright colors. Afra! Can we stop yelling for 30 seconds, please, my friend? She only stops yelling when I make eye contact. Um, so, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah. So that's how, she's really into it because I'm talking about birds. Um, so that's how you make a hummingbird feeder. So the second thing we're going to do is possibly even more simple, even simpler. Um, you're going to take a toilet paper roll, um, which is something we all have laying around or at least easy to save. And this is a planter for plants. And basically the idea behind this is that you start a plant for seedlings so you can keep it inside like in a, on a plate or whatever and kind of get it going. And then you can plant this whole thing in the ground. The toilet paper roll will dissolve and the plant will just grow. So you're gonna take it and you're gonna cut it in half. I do not have the right, quite the right scissors for this. All right, yeah, there we go. All right, there's my half a toilet paper roll. You're then going to cut, she is so loud today, I apologize, I don't know what's gotten into her, I think it is because she's been so quiet today, and I've been quiet, I haven't really had to do much talking, like I didn't have a Zoom meeting this morning or anything, and so I think she's just loaded for bear. Um, anyway, you're going to cut, yeah, you're going to cut about a third of the way up, you're going to cut four little... I have to go way up this way because the scissors. Um, you're going to cut four little sl slits about a third of the way up. That's more like a quarter. Cut a little more. Okay. And then, and basically at each cardinal point. So as much as cardinal points are, um, so you want four equal segments basically, or as, equal, as close to equal as you can get. It is just, I mean, you don't have to, like, measure the circumference and cut and all that kind of stuff. Just eyeball it the best you can. All right. So I have four equal cuts in here. Um, one here. One here. One here. And one here. And what you're going to do is you're going to just fold in. Basically, you're going to, if you've ever had to fold a box, 
it's hard today because we're it's the the toilet paper roll is like melting in my hands because of the humidity. But if you've ever had to fold a box like without taping it until so you do the like the the uneven side, that's basically what you're gonna do with this on a very small scale. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and then show you what it looks like. So, no, you go under. You go under. You go over. I always have to stop and think. You go over. You go under. I gotta do this on the table. Sorry, guys. So yeah, so you end up with it looking like this. And yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a hole because it's just how it works. Um, you can cut up a little higher and try and eliminate that hole. I'm just going to, I have a, Hefra, my goodness. So I think it's because she got screen time last week. Like she actually got to be on screen. And so this week she's like, well, why am I not on screen? I am clearly the star of this show. So, um, you can also cut it up a little bit further so that you, um, you have it, but you also want enough space, enough depth for your seedling to have some, because a lot of, if you've ever planted seeds before, a lot of them, they want you to like plant it like an inch deep or whatever. And so you want to make sure you have enough of your toilet paper roll to make that happen. Um, you can also not cut it straight in half. You know, if you know you have something, you know, you have one that maybe could be a surface one or one that can't, then cut it, like, here instead. Um, yes, Alyssa, Afra was on screen last week. If you haven't watched it, twice, actually. If you haven't watched last week, you should, you, you need to go back and watch it. Um, I'm going to be done in a few minutes, so then you can go back and watch it. Um, so, yeah, you can certainly cut it unevenly, too, if you know something, um, uh, it needs to be planted deeper, so that gives you more. Or you can even use the whole toilet paper roll, although that's a little difficult because, I mean, I don't know about you, but my finger is quite a bit shorter than this toilet paper. My longest finger that I will use uh, is quite a bit longer than, than this toilet this roll. But then again, when you cut it up, it might work. The little ones are cute. It's completely up to you what you find these be the most practical. So what I have is no paper towel. Okay, that's fine. You know what? Sometimes that's just what pants and shirts are for. It's only sugar water. All right, I'm gonna clean off my my trusty tablespoon. Um, now I have now I'm sticky because I have sugar water all over me, and I have a little bowl that I poured out of just basic potting soil. Um, we happen to have some on hand uh, from previous potting projects, so I just grabbed a little bit of it. Obviously, you can use the whole bag, a big bag or a little bag, because of my setup here. This is what makes the most sense for me. So then you're just going to take some of this potting soil. And I'm using the tablespoon not because I'm measuring out the soil, but merely because trying to pour from this, trying to pour from this into this is more of a disaster than I'm willing to take. Um, even with the cover on this table, I've already gotten dirt everywhere. So I'm going to just use the tablespoon as a way to kind of direct my, direct my dirt. And let me see if I... I pour you into here. Let me just see if I can. I can kind of shift a little bit so now you can see it's it's just sitting on the top of the upturned Star Wars cup now. But I don't want to hold it up because because of that little hole, some of the dirt's gonna come out, and if I hold it up, I'm just gonna cascade dirt everywhere. So I'm just gonna take my. Ooh, I got real I got real washed out in the background there. I apologize. I hope you can also continue to see like how this room is evolving. If you've watched all of these, like I can't imagine what it looked like the first week and now it looks like completely different. But anyway, take my dirt. I'm already making a mess. The key is just not to make a mess on my keyboard and as little of a mess on the floor as possible because the rest of it's easy to wipe off. I'm just gonna pour dirt basically up to the lip which is what I've done here. You can see right there. It's all poured up the lip. Um, I didn't get too much. I got some next to the cup, but not, and on the top of the cup next to it, but not too much. You can see the little bit of the dirt I got up here. Not too badly. Um, again, like using a little spoon or something will, will help. Um, 
you know, get it in. And then you just, I don't happen to have any seeds. I think I do, but I don't know where they are. And they're like a year old. So even planting them, they probably wouldn't actually sprout. Um, for various reasons, there was no planting this year done in this household. Um, and then you just basically, you know, you make your little, you stick your finger in there for your little hole, put your seed in, cover it up and just, you don't want a lot of water. I'm going to just use my slightly sugary water. You just want a little tiny bit, you know, as I'm not actually going to even do it because I don't need to. I'm just making a mess. Um, but yeah, obviously you want to keep these somewhere that you don't care if it's going to get a little wet. You do not want to overwater them because um, your cardboard will melt because um, it is just cardboard. You want just a tiny bit of water. Um, spritzing, actually, if you had a spritzer, would work really good for these. Um, to get them wet without overly watering them. Uh, the hole is good for that, though, because what water there is... Ooh, I lifted it too high because I have tilted my screen funny. Um, what hole there is will help the leakage. And you want to put them on, like, a, a plate or a paper plate or something where you're not going to care about it getting ruined. Like, don't put this right on a table. Um, but yeah, so they're little planters. You can use them to grow things from seeds to a point where they're big enough to survive on their own. And then you literally just take this, you dig a hole out in the, out in your yard, wherever you want it. You plop this in it. You put some dirt over, you know, tuck dirt in like along the top and up close to the stem and you walk away and you have a cool little plant. And the, because it is cardboard because of, uh, toilet paper rolls being what they are, it will just disintegrate into your yard. Not in a bad way. And you don't ever have to, like, transplant them officially. Um, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could, like, open up the bottom and plant it in. But you don't have to. Uh, so that's the genius of these is that they, they sort of, you plant them as, as is. So they're great little plant starters, um, especially if you don't, like, if you're not a big planter or you're trying something new and you don't want to spend the money to buy, like, all the fancy stuff you can buy at, like, Lowe's and stuff. Um, so, yeah, this is this is, I think... So the, a little different from my crafts. This is a little bit more like the bird feeder craft that we did like a month and a half ago. Um, in that they're a little more practical things that you can actually use. A little less like crafty, you know, a little less this. And a little more something that, you know, you might get some. Not to say you won't get enjoyment out of those. Because I will. And I still get enjoyment out of them. They make me laugh. Um, but just, yeah, a little bit more... Um, practical so if you if you're a bird person or a uh, planter or even somebody who might want to be a bird person or a planter these are simple ways with things you might have in your house that'll make it really easy to get started without having to spend a lot of money in case you decide you're not a planter or a birder um so anyway uh that's the, it for this week next week we're going back to like full-on craft um and we're going to be doing raised salt painting i believe is what it's called um yeah Afra. she's exciting she liked painting so basically what you need is you need a piece of paper <laughs> printer paper will work fine construction paper i'll probably i don't even know where she is oh there she is um she's she's yelling at her heater that's not even on she's just staring at it and yelling at it i don't know um and uh yeah so you um so you a piece of paper. I'll probably be using construction paper, but printer paper will work fine, as we proved with our with our painting here. Printer paper works just fine. Uh, you need glue. Elmer's clear or not is fine, but you do need like an actual yeah. You do need an actual glue glue. I will probably be using clear because I think that's all we have. But no super glue, please, no super glue. Uh, no glue sticks. You need actual like factual glue. I don't know how like tacky glue and stuff work for this. Um, you can test it and find out. Uh, you need salt, just basic old salt. Don't use anything fancy. I know a lot of us have, you know, slightly fancier salts these days. Um, you don't need, you don't need, <laughs> Alyssa said she also yells at appliances. Um, yeah, you don't need anything, any, you know, fancy kind of salt. Um, you need a paintbrush. You need, yeah, the only other thing you need is some sort of watercolor. Um, that can be as simple, which is what I'm going to be doing because I do not have any watercolors in the house, as food coloring in water. Uh, you want it to be fairly heavy on the water. 
but get a nice color. And basically the idea is you draw a design with glue, you sprinkle salt all over it, and then you just touch your brush with the stuff, with the watercolor, to various points of the, the salt glue combo, and it'll spread out and make really cool color patterns, but only stay on the glue and the salt. I mean, unless you touch the paper, but... Um, so yeah, so that's, that's the idea for next week's, um, so I'll be back again next Monday at two, uh, as, as always, and thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week.